new four-storey house to see what she's got planned for this hidden gem. Sapphire, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Congratulations, and well, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> slight, me. slight wear and tear. A little bit of work to be done. Tell me why you wanted to buy this place. Um, as a student investment, and we knew the area, and it just looked like a good house, just good size rooms, things like that. You have to see beyond the blackness. The blackness, yeah, quite. So tell me a bit more about you and your experience. Well, I finished uni and then I basically came and started managing some student houses. And as I say, some of those needed work, so managed the projects of those. And then um, from there, we've bought a few and we're just kind of expanding, really. Sapphire's never done a project this big before, but it doesn't faze her. She plans to complete the work in a mere nine weeks and wants to put some sparkle back into the place. Then she will rent out the six bedrooms on the ground floor, first and second floor, to students and create a shared living area in the basement. There's certainly space to do that. But remember, you do need to speak to the local council before embarking on a basement conversion. You must also comply with building regulations if you change the layout in any way. And there's even more to think about when dealing with a property that's been fire damaged. With fire damaged properties, you've got to be very careful, haven't you? Because you don't yes. know how much of the structure has been damaged. Yeah. What do you know about the, the structure of the building and what have you done to check it's OK? Well, we are getting a structural engineer in just to check. We do, we can, you can see it sound, but you know with regards to which ceilings need to come down, because some are cracked, but they're still sound, but we might, we just want to do a proper job. So we'll get someone in to get further advice on that. Fantastic. Uh, going into six rooms mm. and four floors brings yes. you into the territory of, of houses of multiple occupation. Yes. Um, what are you going to have to do to satisfy the requirements for that? Um, well, I have filled in applications for those before and they've gone through, but obviously you've got to take into consideration your windows or the fire doors. Um, there's some woodwork that will need fireproofing, so all of that we will take into account. But you comply with. Right, but it will become a licensed HMO. Oh, yes, it? definitely. Who does the projects? Is it you? Is it you in conjunction with people? Um, well, I will probably find a team of builders, and this time, I usually, if it's a smaller project than this, I will project manage it, but at this scale, I want a team to come in and have a manager, you know, that can do it. And I'll just keep an eye on things, but really... Willing to pay the price of that because that obviously yeah will come exactly. With a price, I don't want to kind of be managing one electrician with a plaster and this that and the other. I'd like just a team that they all know each other so they work together. Uh, talk me through the finances then. How, how much is it going to cost to get it sorted? We're still getting quotes in, um, but we're looking hopefully to spend no more than forty thousand. But that's um, start to finish with furniture and decor and everything like that. And that's employing the services of a project manager yes. as well. Great. And what about other family members being involved? I get good advice from, well, a lot of family members. My mum, my uncle particularly. Um, I'm trying to get my younger brother to kind of get a feel for things and um, help out a bit. And he'll kind of, he's only 15, but he's going to... Oh, wow. And it's her younger brother, Max, who's keen to follow in Sapphire's footsteps. He's also a joint name on the mortgage, so has more than a passing interest in it. So, Max, congratulations. You're part of this, then? Yes, I am. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a pretty cool thing, really. It's a good experience. Um, my whole family does it, it, from my grandma to my sister now. Your grandma? Uh, yeah, she was the one that sort of... She owned lots of houses, and then she gave it to my mum, who was her daughter, obviously, and my, my uncle. And um, they split the houses between them, and now my mum's got our whole family into it. Well, how old's your granny now? She must be uh, in her 90s, I think. <laughs> Fantastic. So it's in your blood, is it? Yeah, it is. Now, it's quite an ambitious project for you, sort of first project to be involved in. How do you feel about that? Um, what do you think the first time you walk through the door, really? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Good luck with it. Thanks. And uh, look forward to seeing how you get on. That should be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, many 23-year-olds are more concerned with partying than property picking and 15-year-olds playing computer games. But it seems the team of Sapphire and her brother are really going to get their teeth stuck into this project. It's an ambitious one, though. Lots of work to be done and that £40,000 budget, it'll go 
like that. How will they get on? You can find out later in the show. I get sent out in the garden, Graham stays in the house. <laughs> But first, in Leeds, what does Max think of his sister's property developing talents? I'm really impressed and proud of her. It's just amazing. Now we head back to Leeds and student hotspot Woodhouse, to be precise. Here, property developer Sapphire had purchased this four-storey, six-bedroom property at an auction for £98,000. It had been badly fire-damaged, so renovating it would certainly be a challenge but not one that Sapphire was going to have to face alone. And what about other family members being involved? I'm trying to get my younger brother to kind of get a feel for things and um, help out a bit, and he'll kind of... He's only 15, but he's going to... Oh, wow! So, a family refurbishment, and one that Sapphire wanted done in double-quick time to have it ready to let out to students. She set herself a tight nine-week timescale, and 11 weeks after we first met her, we've returned to see if she's taken this place from shell to chic. Wow! Given the state it was in less than three months ago, to have this place in such great shape in such a short time is pretty incredible. The top and first floors have two bedrooms, each with newly fitted bathrooms. The ground floor has a further two bedrooms. And where the real revelation is, is in the basement, where there's now a communal lounge and two rooms that have been turned into one large kitchen diner. So, originally this was two rooms, so I had the kitchen and then the second half was a coal room. So we've knocked it all through and um, we've made it a lot bigger, so we've got room for a dining table as well. And we've got plenty of units for all the students, pots, pans and food. We've got all new facilities and a brand new kitchen. This is absolutely ideal for student accommodation. Just remember, if you're thinking of doing a basement conversion, you must speak to the local council for advice on permissions or building regulations first. If you plan to knock down any walls to open up an area, get the experts in. You must be sure they're not supporting walls before unleashing your sledgehammer. And there have been more impressive changes upstairs too. So this is the first floor bathroom, which we've completely redeveloped. This was actually a wardrobe at the back here, and we've knocked through, so we've created space for a bath with a shower over it, whilst maintaining space for the toilet and the sink as well so nothing becomes too cramped. Sapphire also had to apply for an HMO licence and comply with HMO regulations on points like fire safety. She managed to achieve all this in just seven weeks, two weeks short of her original timescale. But what about her budget? I've spent in total about 45,000. My original budget was approximately 40, so we're not too far off and I do know where the costs have gone and they're mainly on things such as new gas supply, HMO licence, also the cost of skips and we had some scaffolding up, things like that which I'm not, you know, it's not too bad. What has she learnt from this, her biggest property to date? Doing this property has allowed me to make sure I feel confident starting a house from scratch without electricity, without anything, and hopefully I can then apply those skills to other projects, which I'm keen to do. And it's not the only way that her confidence has grown. Sapphire had considered getting a project manager on board. I was the sole project manager throughout, but my main builder also helped liaise with the electrician and the plumber who were separate from his work and kept everyone running on time and made sure everyone was kind of ahead of each other almost. So I came to property every day to catch up with them, we were always in contact, and um, yeah, it went quite smoothly. Although she took charge, Sapphire's teenage brother, Max, also got stuck in. Well, throughout the project, I helped with various things like the colour scheme and the design of uh, the rooms, especially the main rooms, like the kitchen and the lounge. Also, I did some cleaning around the house when we first got it because obviously it was pretty messy. And um, I helped put some furniture together as well. 
what does Max think of his sister's work on the property? I'm really impressed and proud of her and it's just amazing. Uh, it's definitely something I'd like to follow up in the future. Sapphire's spent a total of £143,000 here, including the £45,000 renovation budget. But has it been a good investment? Let's hear from two local estate agents. I think the property is superb. I think the owner's done uh, a great job getting it done in the time that she has. It was a big job from start, a complete fire damaged property, and uh, now she's produced uh, quality, uh, comfortable accommodation. I think the house has been done exactly how students would like it. It's the right layout, um, the bedrooms are in the right places, it's got two bathrooms, good sized kitchen. It's spot on for that kind of market. Not only did Sapphire get the work done quickly, but she's already let out the six rooms. As she was a little late to hit the student intake, she's charging her tenants slightly less than she plans for the next academic year. So what could she be getting? I think the rental value would be around 65 to 70 pounds per week per tenant. I would expect this property to let at uh, six students at 65 pounds per person per week. OK, well, Sapphire is currently charging between 50 and 60 pounds per room per week. So what does she think? I'm hoping when I market it next year, I'm going to be looking for 75 to 80. Based on my previous setting experience, I'm very confident that we can reach that. Um, if we got 75, it'd be a 16% return, which, of course, I'm very happy with. <laughs> that is an impressive return. However, if she wanted, Sapphire could consider selling the property, but at what price? Uh, I think the resale value would be around 190 to 195,000 pounds. As an empty property, I would place a figure in the region of £180,000. If, however, the owner of the property could achieve a, a full let on this property to six students, I'd be placing an asking price on this property somewhere in the region of £200,000 to £210,000. Bearing in mind Sapphire's total outlay of £143,000, that's a potential pre-tax profit of between £37,000 and £67,000, depending on whether it's sold as a full let or not. Is she tempted? What I think I might do is let it out in January for the coming year, and once it's let, perhaps put it on the market and see if anyone likes to buy it. If not, we'll hold on to it. Good thinking. I will be back next time with more action from the auction rooms around the country. So make sure you're watching Homes Under the Hammer. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye.